Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on graphing inequalities. Some basic stuff you should know already are what integers are, what decimals are, uh, rational numbers, inequalities, and the number line. In particular, you should be comfortable with the number line and how to place integers, decimals, and other rational numbers. So make sure you understand those and let's get started. So again, briefly, what are inequalities? An inequality is a math sentence that can compare numbers or declare a set of values. And there are five inequality symbols. This one here is less than. This one here is less than or equal to. It has that little line underneath the less than sign which basically says uh, equal to. This sign is greater than. This is greater than or equal to. And the last sign you probably won't use too often but you should still know it and it looks pretty obvious, it's not equal to. So how to graph inequalities? Well, let's say we have the inequality x is less than negative 10. There are three steps. The first step is to start with a number line. The second step is to put a circle at the key value. Well, I'm not sure if any of your teachers have called it a key value, but I like to call it a key value. And the reason why I call it a key value is because it's the key to helping us set up our inequality and determine what our possible solutions are. Let's go to step three. Step three is to shade. And there are two things that you may or may not have to shade. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. You need to shade one, the circle that you made at the key value, and two, the side of the circle. And again, we'll go over that in a minute. So Let's make our number line first, and I want to designate what values our number line is talking about. Well, we're talking about the variable x, so we're going to put an x right there. And that just says, hey, everything we're talking about here refers to the variable x. Now, we have to put numbers on our number line. Otherwise, it's not a number line, it's just a line. So, let's start with placing some dashes, and we'll place our key value, which is negative 10. We'll put some numbers to the left, some numbers to the right. And I like to be really accurate by trying to put uh, dashes in between those numbers so that I know what uh, negative 10 is, I know this is negative 9.5, that's negative 9, negative 8.5, so on and so forth. It just helps me to be more accurate. So I'll put a circle on my key value, which is step 2. So now I've got a circle at negative 10. And step 3 is to shade. Now, before I get into how to shade or what to shade, I want to talk about what this means very quickly. We're saying that x is less than negative 10. And there's a whole, there's so many possible solutions. Basically, if you name a number that's less than negative 10, you're right, it's a possible solution. So for example, negative 11.25 is a possible solution. Negative 13 is a possible solution. Negative 10.5 is a possible solution. Negative 12.1 is a possible solution. Negative 13.9 is a possible solution. And all of these other small numbers, every single decimal that's less than negative 10 is a possible solution. Now, we're not going to spend 10 years putting circles that represent values less than negative 10. That's not practical. That's actually going to take you forever. So there's an easier way to do it. And what we do is we shade an arrow to the left of negative 10. And that tells us, hey, Every single number here to the left of negative 10 is a possible solution. Now, because there's so many solutions, this inequality, x is less than negative 10, is actually a solution set. And it's a solution set because it gives you the set of all possible values uh, that satisfy that inequality symbol. We're saying everything less than negative 10. So that's what the arrow tells us, everything less than negative 10. Now, it doesn't matter if you're going by ones like we're doing here, or if you're going by fives like we're doing here, or if you're going by tens like we're doing it here, it really makes no difference. As long as you have your key value set up, a circle at that key value, and shade in the proper direction, you'll still have the correct inequality graph. Think about it, it makes no difference. Before we were going by ones, but the arrow says we're going on forever in that direction. So it could be negative 50, it can go beyond this, it can go to negative 100, negative 200. Either way, those are all values that are less than negative 10. How about this one? Y is greater than or equal to negative 3? Well, first of all, what variable are we talking about? We're talking about Y. And then we put our key value, negative 3. We put some numbers to the left, some numbers to the right, 
and a circle at our key value, which is negative 3. And now step 3, which is to shade. Now, we're talking about the circle here. The circle at our key value is negative 3. We're saying that y is greater than or equal to negative 3. So my question is, is negative 3 also a possible solution? Yeah, it's a possible solution because we're saying y can also be negative 3. So we shade that circle as well. And then, what are some other possible solutions? Well, negative 1.5 is a possible solution because that's still greater than uh, negative 3. 0.75 is a possible solution because that's still greater than negative 3. And negative 0.5 is also a possible solution. Now, again, we're not going to spend forever putting tiny circles for every single number that's greater than negative 3. So, what we do is we shade to the right using an arrow. And that represents our values where y is greater than or equal to, and that's equal to because our circle is filled, negative 3. How about this one? r is not equal to 15. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the variable r, so we'll put that next to our number line. And then we will put our key value, which is 15. We put some numbers to the left. Here I'm going by 5s. Here are some numbers to the right. And we put a circle at our key value, which is, again, 15. Now, we're saying r cannot be 15. So what can r be? Well, it can be 20. It can be 27.5. It can be negative 4.5. It can be 3. It can be a whole bunch of different values. We're saying r can't be 15. Therefore, it can actually be either side. It can be any number on the number line as long as it is not equal to 15. So we shade arrows to both sides of the circle. But again, we don't fill the circle itself. Well, why is that? Because again, we only shade the circle inside if it equals that value. Since it doesn't equal that value itself, we just leave it empty. Another example. Let's say we have the inequality t is greater than 1.75. Don't get intimidated because it's a decimal. The same procedures apply. Well, first of all, what values are we talking about? We're talking about the values for the variable t. So we put that next to our number line. And then let's put some values on the number line. Now, don't be intimidated just because we have a decimal here. All we have to do is find where that decimal is on our number line. Well, we're talking about 1.75. So we know we have the number 1 here, the number 2 here, right in between them is 1.5, and right in between those is 1.75. So we'll place a circle for our key value here. Now, that was step two. Step three is to shade. Now, let's talk about the circle first. Are we going to fill the circle? No, because we're not saying that t also equals 1.75. So it's not that value itself, but what can the value be? It could be 2.5, it could be 4.25, it can be any of these values to the right of the circle. So what do we do? We just shade to the right with an arrow and go all the way to the end. That's one mistake I see a lot of students make. A lot of students, when they make their arrow, they just go and put their arrow and it ends over here. You have to make sure that you bring your arrow all the way to the end of your number line. And that's our graph for t is greater than 1.75. So how about this example? W is less than or equal to 21.5. Well, we already have our number line, but we have to say what we're talking about. We're talking about the values for the variable W. So we'll put the variable W right next to our number line. So let's put some numbers on our number line. Now again, don't be intimidated just because you see a decimal point. It's going to happen. You just have to be comfortable with the number line and where numbers go on the number line. So we're talking about 21.5. Well, here's 21, here's 22, and the middle of those numbers is 21.5. So that's our key value. We'll put our circle there, and that was step two. Step three is to shade. Now let's talk about the circle first. Are we going to shade the circle? Yes, because remember, we're shading the circle whenever our possible value is the key value itself. So we're saying w is less than or equal to 21.5. Therefore, it can be 21.5. And that's exactly why we fill the circle. And then we're saying values that are less than 21.5, which are these values over here. So we're going to shade our circle and then shade to the left. Remember, shade all the way to the very end of the number line. 
And that's our graph for W is less than or equal to 21.5. Here you can just look at the graph and say, okay, our value here is 21.5. It can be 21.5 because it's filled, and it can also be anything less than that because we're shading all the values to the left. Okay, so what we've done up to this point is we've been given inequalities or solution sets, and we've put them on a number line and we've graphed them. This time we're actually going in reverse. This time we're being given a graph and we're going to have to determine what that inequality is. So there are also three steps for this process. First, we determine the variable we're talking about. Second, we determine our key value, which helps us set up our inequality and our solution set. And third is our inequality symbol. So let's take a look at this graph here. Well, what's our variable? That's pretty easy to determine. Our variable here is A, so we just put a. Second, our key value. Well, where's our circle? Our circle's at negative 8, so our key value is negative 8. And third, our inequality symbol. Basically, what's happening here? Well, our key value is negative 8, but can it actually be negative 8? No. And how do we know that? We know that because a circle at negative 8, our circle isn't filled. And because our circle isn't filled, it can't be the key value. But we do have the arrow to the right of that. And since our arrow is to the right of that, that's where all the values get greater. So we have negative 6 and negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4. It goes all the way to the right. So our values get greater. Therefore, our inequality symbol is greater than. And that is our inequality for this graph. Well, what about for this graph? It's the same exact procedure as the last problem. Well, first of all, let's determine our variable. Our variable here, right at the end of the number line, it says C, so our variable is going to be C, and we'll put that. Now, I want to take a moment just to clarify. What happens if you have a word problem, and they ask you for the graph of an inequality, but there's no variable given? Well, I recommend that you just use the variable that is closest to what you're looking for in your answer. For example, if you're talking about temperatures, you would select the variable T. If you're talking about age, you would select the variable A. Um, if you're talking about money, you can use a variable M. So it basically just depends on what's in your word problem. But these are pretty straightforward so far, so we just look for a variable. Here is C. Second, our key value. Well, our circle is at positive 10, so our key value is positive 10. And what about our inequality symbol? For that, we have to make sure that we know what we're seeing on the graph. Well, can it actually be our key value? Yes. And why is that? That's because the circle here at our key value is filled. And because it's filled, our value C can also be 10. Now, what else can C be? Well, we know it's 10, and we know we go to the right on the number line. And since we go to the right on the number line, that's where our values get greater. So it can be greater than or equal to 10. And that is our inequality. And our final example, same exact procedure. First, let's find our variable. Here, our variable's Q, so we'll put that. Then we find our key value. Our circle's at negative 80, so our key value is negative 80. And third, our inequality symbol. Let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Our key value is negative 80. Can our uh, possible solution be negative 80? Yes. And the reason why is because the circle's filled. And when the circle's filled, it can also be that value. So it can also be equal to negative 80. But what else? We're going from negative 80 to the left. And since we're going from negative 80 to the left, we're saying that it is less than. So we're not only saying that our answer could be negative 80, but we're also saying that it could be less than negative 80 as well because we're shading to the left of negative 80. So what inequality symbol do we use? We use less than or equal to. So Q is less than or equal to negative 80. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. So let's go over these, starting with numbers 1 through 4, because those have to be graphed. So, so number 1, your graph should look like this. Number 2, your graph should look like this. Number 3, your graph should look like this. And with number 3, it was a word problem, so you have to read and understand exactly what they were asking you for. They're saying a local bank offers free checking on accounts with over 400, which means that it can't be 400 itself. And that's why we left the circle empty. 
but we're saying it has to be over 400, and that means it has to be more than 400. So we shade to the right. Number four, your graph should look like this. Now, here it says if the temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit or less. So what does that mean? It means it can be 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we fill our circle. Or less, basically straightforward. It says anything less than 50, so we shade to the left on the number line. How about 5, 6, and 7? Number 5 is B is greater than 18. Number 6, G is greater than or equal to negative 15. And 7, V does not equal 28. So let's review. A math sentence that can compare numbers or declare a set of values is an inequality. There are how many inequality symbols? Well, there's five of them. The less than symbol, the greater than symbol, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. When graphing an inequality, there are how many steps? There's three steps. The three steps to graphing an inequality are one, start with a number line, two, put a circle at the key value, and three, to shade. Now remember what I told you before, it doesn't matter if you go by increments of one, by increments of five, increments of 10, as long as you shade correctly, and as long as you pick the correct side, you still have a correct graph for the inequality. In step three, there are two parts to shade. What are they? The first is a circle at the key value, and the second is the side, whether it's the left if it's less than, or to the right if it's greater than. If the key value can also be the possible solution, then the circle is, is it filled or left empty? Well, it's filled or closed. Also included this word here, closed. The reason why I included it was because not every teacher is going to say filled. Some use the term closed, and it means the same exact thing. If they say a closed circle, it just means a filled circle. If the key value cannot also be the possible solution, then the circle is filled or left empty. Well, it's left empty, and I also put the word open here. Your teacher might use the word open. Um, that's called an open circle, but it means the same thing as leaving that circle empty. When the possible solutions are less than the key value, you must shade the line to the left. When the possible solutions are more than the key value, you must shade the line to the right. If any number but the key value can be a possible solution, then you shade to the right and left. There are how many steps to determining the inequality of a graph? There's three. The three things to be determined are, first, the variable, second, the key value, and third, the inequality symbol you're going to use. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.